You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane. We're here each week talking about the backyard. What's going on in the landscapes of northern Arizona, of the mountain region, the high country, God's country? We're uniquely different here. And so you get timing right on the landscapes, and, and all of a sudden your success just starts taking off. If you get the timing wrong and you're actually fighting the environment, quite frankly, Mother Nature, she's going to win probably 80% of the time. Yes, gardeners can prove you wrong sometimes. They can, out of sheer will can make something live. But if you just got the timing right, you could stumble your way into success. That's what we want to do here is help you make mistakes in the right direction. Because gardening is truly learned by killing a few things. If you're not killing some plants, you're not a true gardener. You're not taking enough risks. You're not trying hard enough. And so, you know, even I can have some mistakes sometimes, have some errors. And so I just did, I'm digging some holes now this, this week. We're totally planting the whole front yard. The entire front landscape is completely remodeled in our own home, my, my personal residence. Not here, at the, not here at the garden center, but actually at my own home. And so it was just time. It was starting to get overrun. It was get, getting too thick, had this jungle look, and it just looked dated. So we're creating this, this room effect. So you drive by our house, and you, it, it would feel like you could read the paper outside and sip, sip, sip coffee and enjoy the dogs and just uh, enjoy that environment. That's the goal. And so we've been planting probably every day. I go home and plant two, three plants in the evening. That's what I do for the last oh, couple of weeks. So it's, it's a lot of plants. It will be a, a formal landscape designed with native plants, which is kind of a sweet and sour, that feng shui. It's just, it's not done. But I like this. We had a cottage garden feel, lots of high color, high touch, high fragrance. That's all gone because it has to have high touch, high maintenance kind of stuff. Everything is taken care of by itself. And so it's all automatic irrigation. It's a low drought hardy kind of plants. And so we will water them for a couple of years, get them established, and then I'll sporadically water them. All of the container gardens, which is, we have a lot. I mean, Lisa loves her container gardens. Uh, lots and lots of flowers. Those are all automatically watered. Saucers underneath, lots of polymers and, and uh, just drip irrigation. You will all, we can travel now. We get home, the flowers will still be alive. Which a house sitter, there's just no way that a non-gardener can take care of your dogs and your plants and your flowers. And, and have everything alive. I mean, we just want the dogs alive. We want the house to be you know, in order. And the flowers, we will take care of that with computers to run the irrigation. And it'll all be done ourselves. And so it's just uh, easier care for everyone. And so that, that's, that's part of it. This week, I, we need to get, I mean, it's gone to epidemic proportions. It's ridiculous at this point with the number of customers coming in with gigantic green worms. And the other to that, the other folks are coming in commenting on this beautiful hummingbird or moth that looks like a hummingbird. The sphinx moth, like, like the Egyptian sphinx. sphinx. That's the name of it. Uh, it. It is a gigantic, it's probably the largest of the moths that live here in northern Arizona. Uh, it, it is related to the huge green tomato worms that are showing up in the garden right now. Okay, the, she has been laying eggs in your vegetable garden for a month. They have finally hatched, and those green caterpillars are now munching away and taking over and, and decimating your vegetable garden. It is time to go out and look in the vegetable garden for green tomatoes, or at least for the droppings. You'll see little uh, uh, dark droppings, uh, like bigger than dust. It's like bigger than specks. It's like an obvious someone has been sprinkling almost fertilizer on the top of the foliage of your tomatoes, of your peppers. And so that's the caterpillars eating your foliage. You didn't see them because they, they blend in with the stems so well. In fact, 
if you know what to look for, you can go hunting for them and pick them off and still you'll never find all of them. The big green tomato worms, they turn into, when they finally metamorphose into a moth, they turn into that sphinx moth, which looks like a hummingbird. So you can see why there have been so many of these giant moths, why you might have a problem later on after they've been making whoopee out in your in your vegetable garden, why you'd have so many young to eating away at your vegetables. You really need to watch this or they, or they will affect the production of your tomatoes and peppers. I mean, literally, I saw one eating on a jalapeno pepper. Why this, this caterpillar would want to eat the actual fruit, I don't know. Usually they eat the foliage. I think it has to do with if they're really spicy, zesty, and hot, the birds and the praying mantis won't want to eat them, I think is what they're thinking. They're wanting to taint themselves and be so hot. It'd be like you sprinkling red pepper all over your plants. Well, they're digesting your peppers in the, in the same effect. What to do? Okay, you can pick them off by hand. Actually, it's quite interesting. You pick a big one off by hand, it'll actually spit at you. It spits uh, green goo at you. It's, it's a natural thing that they, when they're being attacked, they just curl up and just attack. They almost go to an attack mode and, and spit whatever's in their stomachs out at you. It's a... Uh, it, Send little boys into you know that, that uh, seven to twelve year old range, and they're going to be mesmerized. Going, oh, can I help pick them off? Oh, can I? That's neat. Let me do that. Uh, you can take scissors or pruners and just not touch them. Just scissor them in two. Although sometimes you make a mistake, and you know, school of hard knocks, you cut the stem of your tomatoes as well at the same time. Okay, that's, you got to be really careful. Or there's an organic spray. The garden centers are going to have it, kind of a specialty product. So with these new organics out, uh, it's called Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. It's really good for anything that digests foliage, any kind of insect that digests the foliage of your plants. Not just vegetables, but any pl flowers, shrubs, anything. Uh, if it digests the foliage, it will probably take them out. It is one of those magic new wonder sprays that you can use in the garden, in the vegetable garden almost up to within just a few days of harvest. I mean, we're talking right there. You could spray your tomatoes and go eat it and, and know that it's safe, uh, but still kill your green tomato worms. Highly, highly effective. So Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. It's kind of a long name, but just think, I matey, it's Captain Jack, and we've got a dead bug brew. Just think in those terms, okay? Ken, Ken said there was some sort of captain spray, and come in and we'll help you. <laughs> Just if you've not been out in the garden uh, harvesting in, in a few days, like this happens almost within just a few days, you'll have a full-on tomato plant, and then it's noticeable. Entire branches are eaten, and people are coming in with entire jars, not just a few. We're talking entire jars filled with these caterpillars. And that's why I need to get this out so that you don't have that damage affected to you. Also, you might really want to keep an eye out on your zucchini, any of your squash. Have you noticed they're growing like crazy? I'm convinced entire streets, whole neighborhoods can be fed off of just a very few squash plants. And so if you're not picking often, better to pick them while they're tender and young than to wait until they get a little bit up to size. If you just wait two or three more days, you can build a canoe out of them. So pick them often, pick them while they're sweet and tender. Same with your cucumbers. They can really grow quickly right now. So pick them often. If your plants are not producing, there's only one reason for that. It's a food thing. You need more phosphorus in the gardens. And so you need to add some liquid phosphorus. So I've got a Flower Power 54. It's 54 percent phosphorus. It's the highest. It's one that I made to, here for the garden center. I made it with these two hands as high as I could go with phosphorus and still keep the phosphorus liquid. So it's a 1054 10. You put that on your tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, whatever you need, want more flowers or fruits on guarantee within a couple of weeks, you'll be going, Whoa, that can, he's a genius. Well, no, it's just, I know it needs phosphorus is not enough. It's starving. That's the only reason it's not setting fruit. So give it more of that 
and you'll have more success. There you go. We get Lisa Waters Lane coming in the studio with your garden questions. Don't you go anywhere. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, also known as the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain landscapes. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive. But so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Waters Weed and Grass Stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and Grass Stopper, it's just $24 and only found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Ouch! Aw, man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. You got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now, welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. She brings your garden questions. What are are your neighbors talking about? Sometimes there's things to be learned by... Just tuning in and listening to other folks' questions. Sometimes in the garden, especially if you're new to an area, you just don't know what question to even ask. And so Lisa comes and uh, brings those questions to us. What are people talking about in your neighborhood? Mm-hmm. And so we've been enjoying our our backyard quite a bit, haven't we? We definitely have. It's yeah. that time of year when it's wonderful to be out in the patios and on the decks and enjoying. That's what we live for. It is. And so our backyard, we love to entertain. Mm-hmm. And so it's an entertainment mecca. But when you're not entertaining, it's like a paradise it's for you and I. <laughs> so we go back, built-in grills and hot tubs mm-hmm. and fireplaces and heaters and big rolling decks and beautiful gardens and butterflies and hummingbirds. And it's therapeutic. I like The dogs it. love it, too. The do- Yeah. Dogs love it when you go into there. You go and enjoy. Like the grill is for them. <laughs> it's their domain. And you're grilling. Drop one, Dad, please. <laughs> No, it's been beautiful this time of year. You just, you can't beat it. You live through June, so you can get to July and August. Monsoon season, I tell you, it just gets, you know, our dry season is actually April, May, and June. Mm -hmm. That's, we have the least amount of rain, but that's when everyone's planting. So the pressure's on to water and care and nurture. Then the rains come in July Mm -hmm. and it cools off. And so it just gets this nice weather. And those of you that are maybe new to the mountains of Arizona, it stays like this forever. I mean, through yeah. you're enjoying the back patio, Into maybe November, with November. Yeah, I mean, November it's, first it's, part of December mm-hmm, last year. We, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you might have a heater or light vest or something, but right. you're outdoors and it's just and beautiful. You can just enjoy it mm-hmm. for a crazy long time, and that's why we live in the mountains of Arizona. That's right. So it's just, I think on Wednesday. Yeah. We had uh, over two inches of rain. It was a crazy the house. I mean, <laughs> That's where I got to redo the erosion control. It's, <laughs> every, the whole landscape kind of moves some. So I got to go back and retrench. So the water right. is up flowing in the neighbor's yard. Mm-hmm. And just do some light maintenance. Not bad. Yeah. But uh, yeah. that was quite, quite a rain. It was quite the rain. I kind of slept through it. You did. I, I mean, sleep. I, lightning and I know. pouring down rain at like midnight <laughs> till. <laughs> I have I have this innate ability to sleep through just about anything. Once but, I'm in bed, that's it. I think it's called having four children. <laughs> yeah. Be the mother of four children. You just learn how to. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> no, you you are a light sleeper. But yeah. yeah, I totally missed the entire storm. So it was like, oh, the storm last night. And I'm like, really? I mean, you could see where it had rained. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because there's mud in the streets and all that. But I totally missed it. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Hey, that's, that's, I'm glad because I went mountain biking mm-hmm. up uh, Trail 391. So, you folks that are mountain bikers, you know all the trail system 391 over to 48 and then back down. And uh, 
No rain. Yeah. No rain. No rain. I got back at like nine o'clock that night and like I drove in the driveway and it started to rain. Mm -hmm. I'm going, whoo, that could have been a, you're going like three, four, five miles back in the country. So you're not near anything, which is why you mountain bike or hike. Right. And so I could, we could have been, that could have been disastrous. You still been up there. <laughs> I would have been worth Ken. I don't know where he went. Yeah, we'll see him tomorrow. <laughs> he usually shows Maybe. up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is about garden questions, though. It's not uh-huh. our gardens, but uh, what are other people talking about? What are the questions we got this week? Sure. So Jack and Prescott has a peach tree that is yeah. just uh, pushing out sap towards the base Ooh, of the okay. tree. Yeah. He wants to know, is it something important? Should you treat it? And if so, what do you treat it with? Yeah. It's, it's in fact, it's deadly. I'm glad you caught it, Jack. This is good. So anytime you see bubbles or sap running at the base of a tree, especially fruit trees, especially pitted fruits, that'd mm-hmm. be your peaches, cherries, apricots, nectarines, plums. Did I get them all? Five I think so. Pitted. So yeah. all the things that have a pit in the middle. They, there's a little clear-winged wasp that lives in the mountains of Arizona, and she loves to lay her eggs right at the base of these trees. So in this case, it's a peach. And so the, the larva will hatch, will burrow into the, the, the base of this tree, and it starts generally at ground level and works its way up to about where the first branches come out. So if you mm-hmm. see any sap running anywhere in that area, you've got a peach tree bore. Or if it's in a plum, it's a plum tree borer. If it's in an apricot, it's an apricot tree borer. If it's it's all the same. It's very scientific. So they're, they're the same thing. <laughs> little tiny. It's amazing that that little tiny wasp can do mm-hmm. that much damage. Can kill the tree. It will kill the tree. That she right. gets underneath that larva, gets underneath, and then burrows around underneath that cambium layer, the the sweet uh, living tissue area, and then hatches and comes back out. But the mm-hmm. damage is done. The tree is trying to suffocate. The larva that's in there, that's why it's flooding. It's trying to, mm-hmm. it's bleeding, trying to flush that out of there. You, you do need to correct that. Now, the book says take a piece of wire <laughs> and poke it underneath that bubble or that running water. You, you, you'll see a, a hole. Mm-hmm. Try to poke it down in there. Sometimes you'll pierce the body of that little tiny worm. Really, I... I, I don't really do that. It's just hard to get. It's, and I don't think the odds are very good you'll get it. If you caught it early, yes. The main thing is open up that wound, find the spot. And then we've got a product here called Multipurpose Insect Spray. It's a product mm-hmm. that we put together for the boars. It's one, one of many products. So it does many insects. That's why it's called Multipurpose <laughs> Insect Spray. But you, you paint that on really with a paintbrush or a foam, yeah. like a paintbrush applicator, something mm-hmm. that you can be very specific with. Full strength. Mm-hmm. And, and then dab it right on top of that hole, and it will penetrate down into the wood. I guess that's where it would help to, to poke, poke a piece it. of wire or something, just to open it up mm-hmm. so it receives this poison. And it'll, it'll go in that, that burrowing system, the nest of that particular worm, and it kills them off. Mm-hmm. Um, if you let it go unchecked, they grow. And become more ferocious. They'll finally girdle the tree, so it'll cut the cambium layer, that living tissue. It's like you took a hatchet all the way around the bark of the base of this tree and killed it. Mm-hmm. So it won't die right immediately. It'll be like six weeks from now. It'll die. So you need to really get on this. It's important. But come in and talk to us. We can get you, give you the hand holding of that. But mm-hmm. main point being for for everyone else, if you see sap coming from the trunk of the tree. It is not natural. They are not meant to do that. They are being attacked. And whatever is attacking that will kill the tree if left unchecked. Come talk to a professional. That'd be us here at Waters Garden Center. <laughs> and we'll help you out and get it. Get you, okay. get you Did they track. clean the sap off before they treat it? Or you just try to try scrape to it back. I don't know if you have to see. clean it off. It's The Wipe sap it isn't doing anything. It just yeah. open it up so you can see where the wound okay. is. That's what you're really after. Mm-hmm. Do you need to dress it afterwards? No. Do you need anything else? No. You just want to clean that and then poison it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, you'll see the sap stop, stop running as a tree heals itself. Yeah. Okay. Next question is from Anne in Prescott Valley. She says, my geraniums are producing lots of buds, but they never open and they look like they have holes. Is it oh, disease or yeah. is it insect? Yeah. Well, you could probably help us with this one. It's <laughs> the bud worms, the buds, flowers are being attacked. Yes. So bud worm. And it's, yeah. I don't, 
every year I think this is really bad this year, but yeah. maybe it's the same every year. Yeah. It's just when it shows up, you're like, oh my goodness. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you get so excited because you, you look at these beautiful buds and you're like, oh, it's going to be gorgeous. And yeah. they never open. A little tiny moth comes around, flies around at night. You don't even see her. She lays an egg on your flowers. On petunias, geraniums, or certain ones, she really likes her kids to kind of nibble on. Mm-hmm. And so it's a little tiny caterpillar that burrows in and just, they only eat flowers, only flowers. And so they like geraniums, petunias, violas, calipricoas, mm-hmm. or certain ones they seem to really like. Right. Spray them with Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. It's an organic. You can spray if you safe around. I would say don't spray the dogs or the cats and <laughs> birds, but basically you can spray it around there and keep them out of there until, right. it, until it dries. And then it's mm-hmm. it's all natural. And then it's safe for them to be around that. Mm-hmm. But deadly if you're a caterpillar, tomato worm, any kind of caterpillar wipes them right Did out. Did you see that big tomato worm we pulled off? Uh, the other day at the garden center. No. It was huge. Yeah, three, four, five inches long. Yeah. It looked like an alien life form, like they're going to suck on your jugular vein or something, it or was, suck your eyeballs it out. Was or... scary. <laughs> it I was scary. I like really them because you pick them off and they spit at you. Yeah. They'll actually vomit all over you. I'm going, that's gross. Oh. He was actually brown because they kind of turn the color of whatever they're eating. So he was yeah. actually a brown color. Yeah. Was... What was he eating? I'm not sure. Oh, everything in the nursery. He was crawling across the upper greenhouse. Oh. I was like, holy cow. <laughs> Migrating. <laughs> right. Anyway, if you see bugs, this is the time to really grow. Come mm-hmm. talk to us. We can tell you how to, to wipe them out. So, budworms, take them out with Captain Jack's Dead Bug Boo- Brew. Be right back <laughs> with Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Pink Volcano Phlox. Just when spring flowers are fading, these beauties revive and show off. Your grandmother only dreamed of growing a pretty pink phlox this fine. Each flower cluster could make a bridal bouquet all by itself. This new volcano series is erupting with flowers used to accent entries and fountains, all for $15. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love eruptions of pink flowers, they love to shop. Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our Lavender Chiffon Hibiscus. This hardy variety is one of the longest blooming, most prolific shrubs showing off massive 4-inch lavender flowers all summer long. This stately bush likes to show off and all for $39. But wait, there's more. These pretty shrubs come back again next year with even more stunning beauty. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love stunning hibiscus, they love to shop. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now, welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. The ornamental grasses, these decorative grasses. Now, we're coming into the season when they are really going to take center stage. And I think the mountains of Arizona... Where this breeze is, we, we always have, to have a breeze going on. The grasses just catch that wind and just sing. They almost dance like the hula dance out there in the landscape. They're very, very pretty. And we grow more perennial grasses without issues, without the, the problems, without all the insects and mildews and, and molds that anyone else in the country has. We grow nicer grasses than, than really anywhere else. We grow a lot of them native for this area that are unique to us. Bear grass, like B-E-A-R, bear grass, grows wild. Anywhere from four to maybe 6,000 foot level, any of the valley areas where it's really exposed, very windy, it sort of looks like a pampas grass, but much, much tougher. does really great. The benefit of planting a nice, beefy, healthy grass now. They are not quite in plume. Some of them are. The smaller ones, like the oak grasses, your your uh, coral foresters, they are in plume. I mean, they look gorgeous right now. But those that haven't quite plumed, they will be in uh, usually about September, October, November. That's when they're in all their glory, that true autumn season. They really look good. If you can put them in the ground right now, 
get them started to root out and established, they will actually start to set plumes right there in the landscape or in your container, in your raised beds, right, right there for you. So you're not taking them home, planting them, and then they're, they look gorgeous at the garden centers. And then you plant them and they stop sending off new plumes or they just wilt and they start to fade or they start to send off. They, they just stop because they're going into this transitional transplant shock. If you can put them in right now, strategically getting that timing right, you can put them in now. They will be over the top delicious. I mean, just gorgeous. I mean, show stoppers for fall. Better to get them just as they're setting or just before they set those plumes to plant them in. Right now they're big, they're bold, they're full of, of blades because they're a grass. They'll have lots of motion. They're standing anywhere from the little guys a foot, two feet high to the bigger ones like pampas grass. There's some out there that are four foot by three foot. I mean, they're huge. Not quite setting plumes yet. But some of the grasses that really do well, let me just, this might be where you want to pull out some pen and paper. There's some natives that really adapt. I mean, you get them started and you could really have no care to them. I mean, you could just let them go and do their own thing. One of the most famous is a regal mist pink muley grass. It's a knee high grass, very fine blade. It's really pretty. It's almost as though you let a lawn grass just go and let it just grow up and very majestic flowing kind of grass. And then in fall, as it sets those plumes, it'll be all pink. The entire top of this grass will be solid pink, beautiful, like cotton candy pink. It's very, very pretty. When the sunlight comes through them, hummingbirds are feeding off of them. It's, it's just almost magical. It's a beautiful grass and super drought hardy. The cousin to that is the deer grass. Deer grass is similar to the pink muley grass, but it has, has a lighter pink or, or a very bright white uh, plume to it. Very, very pretty. Another native, the bear grass. We already mentioned that one. One that you may not have seen or heard of, but very, very tough and, and in plume right now is the overdam feather reed grass. Feather grasses do well. All feather grasses. And there's a lot of them. Ivory feathers. Uh, pampas grass, variegated Japanese silver, feather grass, coral foresters have take off of feather grass. These, that's these medium size. They grow maybe up to hip high, not too tall, very deep, deep rooted. So you can treat them like a tree, put them on the same irrigation cycle as your trees, water them once a week, perfectly fine. They'll be happy with that. They adapt almost better than a tree in a clay soil. Uh, they'll be right up there with, with what barberries and uh, lilac, very tough, robust plants, very deep rooted. They send a tap root down actually multiple, like a palm tree. They send many tap roots down to about the three foot level. So that makes them very, very hardy. Those grasses just really do well. One I have used in the back of my, like I've got a pond in our in my own yard. It's got a waterfall, comes down into a beautiful pond. It's gorgeous. And then I rain harvest off the rooftop, and then it goes into the waterfall. And then I try to gather up all that rain that I can. Then if it overflows the pond, we have a real rain event. I've got a lower pond that's just a retention pond, just holds the water. So I'm not flooding my neighbors downhill. Around this retaining pond, is a hill. Just obviously, it's just, it's not a true pond. It doesn't really hold water. It's just to gather it and have it seep. So I get to keep the water in my own soil instead of it flowing off the property. Around the edge of this, this berm, I put blue lime grass, blue dune lime grass. It's a short grass, maybe two, three feet. Prettiest blue, like a silver blue, like, like a, what does it look like? Like a Colorado spruce blue. It's magnificent. This is the time when you put those grasses in and you'll see a lot of variety at the garden centers right now. It's a great time to plant. Late summer, monsoon season, great time to plant grasses. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. 
at Waters Garden Center. We're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood. The plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally. Or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive. But so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Waters Weed and Grass Stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and Grass Stopper. It's just $24 and only found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. And we are back in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. In this segment, we get the woman's touch, the inspirational piece, the the feelings in the garden. So it's not all about me and my bugs and disease <laughs> and pestilence and chainsaws, chainsaws and power <laughs> equipment. Come on, guys, you got this, right? Electric hedgers. We get the woman's touch in the garden, which which is color and fragrance and mm-hmm. and just how to make it grow better and bloom more often. So we give a whole segment just to Lisa for, for mm-hmm. that, that reason only. Yes. So, and that's the only reason that's you get a second. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh-huh. So okay. what do you got for us today? Well, today I thought um, some people kind of get this feeling by this time of the year, they're kind of winding down. No thinking, way, we're at the very peak. We're... But it's an amazing time to plant and it's a oh, great yeah. time to find a lot of plants. True. So um, I was out perusing the garden center this morning and we have some fabulous perennials out and it's a great time to still fill in those perennial beds get some more bright color yeah. out there freshen things up so i thought i would just talk about a few of the perennials that i really like that love this time of year that's perfect because some of the plants like uh, the mexican primrose that one with mm-hmm. that uh, silver dollar size pink flower it gets so aggressive right. that you get too much of a good thing. <laughs> you need to get rid of some of them mm-hmm. and plug in maybe some yellows or some reds or right. some purples. Get some different colors or plants. It's a great time to look at your beds and see what other colors can I mix in there? What do I need to pull out that's just not performing like it should? Yeah. It's a great time to replant and put some fresh stuff in. So what's first on the list so we get them all in? Well, the first ones that are just fabulous right now are the echinacea or coneflower. Coneflower, that's good. So most people are used to the purple one that's been around forever, and I'm not knocking that, but there's some new colors out. The wild berry, which is a bright, bright pink, almost cranberry color. Oh, nice. Uh, it's called Pow Wow Wild Berry. Pow Wow Wild. Yeah, try and say Pow Wow Wild Berry. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is Cheyenne Spirit, which is really cool because it's got orange and yellow and it's got like three different colors oh, yeah. um, on the same plant. And they have that real dark eye in the center, yes. right? So yes. it's a big eye and then it's mm-hmm. got petals that radiate out from mm-hmm. that in very bright colors. Very bright colors. And butterfly landing pads. Yes. And very sparrows. Much so. We use that in our backyard, several mm-hmm. varieties. Right. Because we're bird gardening. So mm-hmm. we're trying to bring more birds in and the birds eat the seed heads. And Yes. Salvia heat wave. And there's the Blaze series, which is, it's not really a red red. It's more of a... Sparkle red. No. What color is that? I have no idea. <laughs> kind of a cherry color is the okay. best way. I can. It's not yeah. that true. It's not the Furman's red, which like is a that fire darker. engine like red. No, is it's that... more pinky red. Does that make sense? We got. You're describing <laughs> colors to a man. You know, I've only got seven crayons in my box, and I'm trying to correlate. <laughs> it's more of a cherry red. Okay. Uh, the other one is a purple, which is very, very attractive. You don't you see the reds and that kind of a lot, but the purple mm-hmm. one is very, very pretty. It, yeah, it mix I do in like nicely. the purple. I like that tangerine one you've mm-hmm. had. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, what about sports car red? Ooh. Would that be? I can, as a man, no, I can understand it's not that. Sports car red. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Hot rod red. How about that? No, oh, okay. A little like more the candy apple. More womanly like a, than that. Okay. It's more that pinkish red. <laughs> Gara, which is another just terrific plant. It performs mm-hmm. so, it's like a backbone plant. You can yeah. throw it out there, you can kind of ignore it, and it just keeps blooming all summer long. Comes in the white, has a real white blossom on it. We have one called Rainbow Petite. So the uh, foliage on it is actually tricolored. It's got a pink yeah. and green and kind of purpley right. color sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the foliage itself is very attractive, and then the bloom is a light to dark pink color mm-hmm. on it. Uh, Gara, to me, is one of those foolproof 
plants if you've got a tough spot. Throw a gara in it. Or you're just new to gardening or you get mm-hmm. frustrated. You're going, oh, this mountain gardening is so hard. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you're still trying to plant hydrangeas when you should be planting <laughs> garas and echinaceas and some of the local native stuff. Right, so right. change up your plant pellet and all of a sudden that is true. Your, your success rate mm-hmm. will go pew, off That's the charts. That's true. I was talking to some gals that were from Connecticut. And they were talking about just how, they're like, yeah, you just throw stuff in the ground there and you walk away. And I'm going, well, welcome to Arizona. Yeah, Yeah, I could throw this pin in the ground in California (laughs) and it would just take off and grow. Not not so in the mountains, Mm -hmm. high country of Arizona. Right. So planting, putting those plants in that are conducive to our environment, you're going to be much further ahead. Which to- is fun. If you're into gardening, mm-hmm. why not have fun with a local plant mix and some sure. of the things that are – just some, try something new. Right. Maybe walk the neighborhood. Take a camera phone. Mm-hmm. If you see something pretty, you don't know what it is, go click. Bring it in and go, what is it? Right. I want one. <laughs> so we'll go, oh, well, yeah, that's Gara. And there's three different choices. We've got a tricolored one and a white right. one and a pink one. Put them all in. Yeah. Well, we do it. Our mailbox, that's our number one foundation plant it's true. out at the street. It's, it's so very hot true. out there. That and the salvia. Yeah. The other one I was gorgeous. It's not really a true perennial, but it can kind of act like a perennial, and that's the dianthus. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got one in called Jolt Cherry. Jolt Cherry. And okay. Bright Cherry. Um, what was the other one? It was Pink. Jolt Pink. It's the Jolt Series. Jolt I don't Series. Know what that means, but it's the Jolt Series. But bright. Oh, my goodness. You walk out there and it just catches your eye. And they're taller for most of you. They get about 18 to 20 inches wow, taller. that's pretty. Uh, so they really make a statement out there. So if you're looking for something for some bright color, um, those would be terrific out there. And now, they I'm usually... not familiar with that one. That That's mm-hmm. that's a true dianthus, which yes. means the rabbits and the deer, they don't leave like the alone. taste. They'll leave mm-hmm. it alone, yet it brings in the butterflies and mm-hmm. hummingbirds. They do like it. So right. it's... And they bloom longer. Right. Into the fall, even even winter. Because they like the cool seasons. They do. So it's a great time to put it in because you'll okay. get a lot more bloom. We need one of those of at home. We do. Yeah. Very, very pretty. Red Hot Pokers. So we got some new ones in um, called the Echo Series. And they have okay. Echo Mango, which is kind of a real Sounds bright. military. Or, I know. This is Echo Mango coming to <laughs> Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would think that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Maybe so. Um, they have an Echo Rojo, which is more red. So they have one that's real orangey, one that's more red, and then one that's more yellow. And that would be one that would be put out in your printing, get the assortment of the colors. Yeah, And sure. put them together out there. It would be very attractive. Now, would you recommend – now, they generally say design with, with odd numbers, threes, mm-hmm. fives, sevens. So when you're buying them, buy – Odd numbers, it looks right. more naturally. And then don't plant mm-hmm. them in rows. Yes. Plant them in triangular shapes. So mm-hmm. it looks like little clusters. Is that one, it's the same variety but different colors. Would you put three of them, mm-hmm. odd numbers, but get all three different colors and plant them together? Or would you suggest planting all the same color in threes and then go to the next? What, does it depend on the situation or how I would you do that? I think it depends on the person. Like me, I would I would have no problem putting three different colors in there. But that's me. I like a lot of different color. Yeah, you're an um, English gardener cottage. Right. Some people want a more formal type garden, in which case put three of the same color in okay. and do your triangle with the three different colors. So yeah. it kind of goes but what you, the look that you like, yeah. what you're comfortable with. Probably the size of the garden too. If it's a big oh, garden, you need mm-hmm. more plants, more show. If you just right. put one, one color, it would quickly get dwarfed. You mm-hmm. need more of a statement. And right. so you put three together, same color, then put another over here in this part of the garden. Another put, patch of the, exactly the three right. different. Yeah. 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 You're right. Size would make a big difference yeah. on what you're doing. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack you, but what else on the list? <laughs> Gallardia, which is a terrific wildflower for it here. Is. Yeah. We seeds itself, so if you've got that nice bed and you want more coming up in there, it will definitely do that for you. The Arizona Sunset one is just gorgeous. It's kind of a mixture of yellow and orange and it has the big brown center. So yeah. it has that Arizona Sunset look yeah. to it. I Very always attractive. like Echinacea with Gallardias uh-huh. and then Coreopsis below that because it gives you a similar nice kind step. of flowers, similar mm-hmm. companions. Well, one's tall, one's medium, one's mm-hmm. short. You kind of you can fill up a bed quickly right. with some real tough little plants mm-hmm. that uh, gives you some layering to it as well. Right, and they have one that's called Red Shades, which has a little more red coloring to yeah. it as, as opposed to the orange. A red Gallardia. Mm-hmm. That's unheard of. They're always it's yellows very, and oranges. This one's more red. It's orangey red. 
Orangey red counts. You it mean counts. like uh, hot rod red? Like uh, what kind? Co- yeah. <laughs> but that's a nice one to mix the Coreopsis in with because the yellow in the Coreopsis oh, sure. is a little bit smaller flower, but it really picks up the yellows in, in the Gallardia. So nice to mix together and same kind of water usage and what they want. You know how I, how I mix and match colors as a man? <laughs> Close your eyes. No, nope, no, I've got a, I've actually got a system. Oh, so okay. I, the gal comes up and goes, do they, do they go together? I look at the plant and any color on that flower. So you said yeah. tri-colored flower. I just go, if it's similar to that color, it matches because I figure nature you can't go wrong with nature. I agree. So that works out real well. Anyway, thank you, Lisa. Sure. You've tuned in to Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Prosythia already flowered? Hylax languishing in the heat? Spring bloomers already pooped? Butterfly bushes are going strong and re-bloom all summer long. Pollinators like butterflies and hummingbirds love butterfly bush for their fantastic fragrance and bright summer colors. These tough head high beauties love summer sun and bloom nonstop. Fresh new plants just arrived at the place where people who love butterflies and butterfly bushes, they love to shop. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Kim here with the Plants of the Week and our Lavender Shades Blooming Penta. One of the best butterfly attracting plants. It's right up there with milkweed, only prettier. Hummingbirds have to dance around all the butterflies of this deeply colored summer bloomer. Plant a few in the vegetable garden to attract pollinators that help tomatoes and squash set more fruit, all for under $10. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love to garden, they love to shop. Now, summer is such a good time to grow things. I told you at the beginning of the show, uh, I would say this is my, my most successful gardens are planted from the monsoon start through fall, especially larger, let's say fall-colored trees. You'd be great to plant your fall-colored maples, your ash, locusts, aspens, birch, all I mean, all of those varieties of fall-colored plants. Everyone comes in when the maples start turning red, and ours are red too. It's great. They take them home, and by the time they get them home, all the leaves have blown off. So that 50-mile-an-hour or 35-mile-an-hour car ride or truck ride to, to, to the gar- gardens at home, they all blow off. It would be better if you can put them in now while we're still during the monsoon season. You'll get an extra month or two months of rooting on that plant before we get into winter. And most importantly, you get to enjoy all the color instead of the garden center and the customers that come in here It's already planted in your yard, and then it will turn colors as the fall continues. And and you won't lose that foliage as you you head home. Uh, I would say burning bush, one of the first plants to turn red, that burning red color in fall. Okay, we're a month or two out before that happens. We're a long way before fall is here. But the point is, put them in the ground now so that they transition, or we call it acclimate, to your garden setting so that they they turn when all the others turn in your own gardens. I would say goji berries, a beautiful little edible plant. So one of the super health foods. I don't know if you've been to Trader Joe's lady and see lately and seen the the goji berry almost like raisins. They're crazy expensive. You can grow that in your own backyard. You do not have to to go to the grocery store and buy these exotic foods when they'll grow right there in your uh, blackberries. I have picked an entire bowl, I, not bushel, but darn close to it, of my own blackberries. Raspberries were before that. And so you, you can grow those yourself. You don't have to go to the grocery store, but you need to get them in the ground so that they're rooted. So when they are ready to produce on our cycle, they're, they're in your yard, already rooted, waiting to fruit, waiting to, to blossom and fruit and set fruit so you can harvest next year, this fall, to enough said. Now's the time. If you committed too much of your landscape budget to spring bloomers, 
or early summer bloomers. You know, everyone's in in April and May planting. They're buying all the inspirational stuff. And the garden looks so good in April, March, April, May, maybe first part of June. As we get towards this latter half of summer to the first part of fall, sometimes the garden can look empty. It doesn't have the same sparkle. Yet some of the best colors of the year are in the summer. Your best crepe myrtles. Oh, they are so magnificent. Nothing is as bright. The flower, no other flower is as bright on a shrub as crepe myrtle. Your big rose of Sharon's, your hearty uh, hibiscus. Nothing is as spectacular as a hibiscus, but they aren't in leaf, much less bloom in spring. And so if you commit too much to the spring items, what will happen is you'll have a yard that's all green when it was colorful, but now it's mainly green. Or a lot of the summer colors I noticed are blue to purple. They're kind of kind of lavender blue and purples. So all of a sudden you had all these bright yellows and pinks and these bright colors, a lot of mixture. And now all of a sudden in summer, You walk on, you go, well, it's not as bright as it was. Spring was better. Early summer was better. Now it's mainly the purple of butterfly bush. And that's it. So I thought I'd give you a list of things that are bright, that love summer, that that prefer to be planted now while it's warm. I've got a list of maybe 10. I've, I've got, here you go, my list. We'll just go through, and I won't go through elaborate examples of what they are, but things you could head to your local garden center and see in bloom right now and would be easy to plant and would prefer to be planted now in, in your own landscape than to than to be planted in spring or winter or some of the other years, uh, other seasons. So we'll start out with probably the most famous of all the bloomers, roses, but not just any rose, home run rose, which is an old fashioned or shrub rose, has a flower about that's red. It's a flower on it that's about Oh, silver dollar size, maybe a little bit larger, but it loads up with flowers right now and it will not stop blooming without any care. You do not have to special prune it. You don't have to do anything extra with it. It, it just always has flowers from now through about Thanksgiving, first of December. It's crazy. Home run rose. Really good. Doesn't get mildew. Doesn't get bugs. It's a great little plant. So look at your roses. All the roses seem to look really good. Uh, late, late summer, as monsoons hit, they just all seem to set flowers, but some of them are more work than others, but not the home run rose. Miss Molly butterfly bush. Now, Miss Molly, all butterflies look, they look good right now. Miss Molly borders on the red. So you're getting away from all the purples and blues. This is more red and it's dwarfed and good, nice, chunky, good looking shrubs, about 19 bucks. Get a lot of plant for the money, but Miss Molly, look at that one. There's a lot of butter. I probably have a dozen different butterfly bushes, but the Miss Molly is really cute and it's, and it's easy to care for. It's, it's, it's a dwarfy. Your sunshine daydream abelia. So if you've got a dark spot, the east side of your house, abelias will grow anywhere in the yard, but this one, the sunshine daydream also grows in the more shaded areas and the foliage is variegated with a nice gold. So it's nice and bright. It's, it's cheery. Thus the sunshine daydream. But then it has this cute little pink flower. Really nice. It just loads up with flowers and keeps blooming. Great summer bloomer. A big plant will run anywhere 30, 35 bucks. Get a lot of plant for the money. This time of year, plants really are inspiring. Gold finger potentia are for you folks in the, in the, in the East Coast, you know, Midwestern, Goldfinger Potentella, Potentia. We're in the Southwest. Just don't pronounce the L's and away you go. A big plant runs under under 40 bucks. We're talking instant shrub. Bright gold, like Goldfinger, uh, um, I would say quarter size flowers, dozens and dozens of flowers load up on this knee high shrub. It's a really good looking plant. If you've got deer and javelina and rabbit issues, Potentia. Great way to go because animals don't bother this one, yet it loves blistering hot sun. Good plant. A companion plant with the potentia is your red autumn sage. There's a lot of red autumn sage. Hummingbirds love red autumn sage. It, it's, a, it's a big plant. You get a, get a big instant. I mean, put it in the ground and, whoa, lots of flowers for under 30 bucks. 
It also comes in, and you may not know this, purples, tangerines, oranges, pinks, whites. There's a lot of choices, but the autumn red is the number one seller because it's such a good looking red. I mean, it's, it's better than lipstick red. I mean, it's, it's like fire engine. No, it's, it's a darker than fire engine red. It's a, it's a pretty red anyway. A surprising one. I was walking out in the yard uh, this morning, getting ready for the show, and the Southern Moon Hawthorne, which is a spring bloomer, it's gotten confused, and it's been such a nice season. It's in bloom. It's starting to bloom again. This is a nice little knee-high evergreen that gets a very fragrant pink flower on it. So uh, hawthorns are just just a trooper in the sun, dry, arid climates, but low maintenance, stays real low. A big one, a big, give it some room, up against the fence line, chain link, up against the trellis, Yukon Bell Pyracantha. Now, Yukon Bell, I know Pyracanthas get a bad, they've got a bad name because of the thorns on them, but man, they are hardy. Low water, low care, pretty white flowers in spring. They're loaded with orange berries right now, and yes, you will need to buy a good pair of leather glo- gloves. I mean, you just need some long handled pruning tools and some leather gloves and you're, and you're golden. Lastly, the grasses are looking really good right now. Grasses in Northern, in the mountains, mountain gardens, grasses just flow. They, they wave at you in the wind. They're really nice. And they show off from the monsoons through fall. I really personally, I like the coral forester feather grass. One of my favorites gets about hip high Blooms early, keeps the blooms through next year. Amazing little grass. Okay, you can plant these and more through the summer. They prefer to be planted in the summer. But we'll be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our timeless beauty, Desert Willow. Large, fragrant burgundy and lavender flowers appear in big, bold clusters all summer long. This unusual water selection is prized for its long bloom time without setting the usual seed pods. The flowers are highly attractive to hummingbirds, 100% Arizona native, and just $49. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love their native plants to bloom, they love to shop. Ouch! Oh man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. You got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Now as we close the program, a couple things to watch in the gardens. Obviously, we're keeping up with weeds, but also uh, uh, snails and slugs have been in my gardens. So really watch for those. If you see holes in the leaves of your potato vine, uh, of your petunias, you'll see holes in the leaves of things. Uh, That's probably going to be snails and slugs, and they're brought on by all the moisture. Really easy to make, to to control. You simply put out a snail and slug killer, a bait. They're drawn to it, eat it. I would say be very careful if you're using snail and slug baits because other things can be attracted to those. So you do want to, this, this is important to use organics rather than chemicals because your pets might eat them. The birds might go after the pellets. It's a bait where they're attracting things to eat this. So it's got a flavor to it that are specific to snails and bugs. But I just had snails and bugs in, in, in mine and I had some cutworms. So I took, uh, Sluggo Plus. Sluggo is a good organic. That's, that's the name of the product. You'd think they'd have a better name, but Slug O uh, has a, a 
uh, organic bait that they're attracted to, but it also kills off earwigs and pill bugs and cutworms. So it attracts more than just snail and slugs, but it's safe for your, your pets, cats, birds, that kind of stuff. Safer. Obviously, use some common sense. Read the directions. That's what I have to legally say, but that's what I would recommend to you. Uh, watch f- for that because they've been bad, so things grow fast. Uh, the other one is um, I'm doing a little bit of maintenance on my yuccas. So the yuck, red yuccas, your standard yucca plants, they've bloomed out, and now they're so- forming these huge seed pods up and down the stems. If that bothers you, go ahead and cut them off down at the base of that yucca, and it'll, it'll probably leave out and grow even more. There's plenty of growing season left, so it could bloom again. Uh, sending off a new stock or try this idea. Uh, if you don't want to cut it off, but it kind of bothers you because it was blooming. This is the artist in me. So you could take, get, bear with me, a can of spray paint and actually spray paint those seed pods red or blue or green or whatever color you like in the garden. All of a sudden you turned your plants into art, at least until the fall season's done or things go on. But there's a way to uh, make it where those seed pods, they start to get weighted down. They start to bring the stem down. Uh, but if it's done blooming, either cut it off or turn it into art. That's my advice for you. If you did not listen to my advice two months ago by putting weed and grass stopper down, you're now being overwhelmed by weeds. Oh my goodness. If you need help with that, I can I can help you. We've got a lot of experts that know weeds better than anyone else in the area, and we can keep it safe for you. Uh, I've done too many programs on weeds already. That's one. If you need help, come talk to us. Otherwise, tune in each week and do what I say. Take, take the advice and run with it because it does actually work. I have very few weeds at my own homes because I was putting weed and grass stopper down. We do have garden classes each week. So this coming week, it's herbs, uh, table to garden, garden to table. And then next week, we've got uh, uh, Arizona Seed Alliance. That's a uh, Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance. Excuse me. Uh, they're coming how to save seeds, how to bring back some of the old-fashioned seeds, uh, seed banks. They're local, yet they influence the entire Rocky Mountain region, but they live right here. They're one of us. So they're coming to share that. Ground covers, vines, and erosion control, if that's been a problem. And then... The first Saturday in September is Gardening for Newcomers. Every Saturday, there's a free garden class here at Waters Garden Center. We just want you to be a better gardener because it's a little different here. And it's our way to invite you into the nursery, see us, see what we're all about. We're trying to be neighborly, helpful, and and just make better gardeners out there, more beautiful yards. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners will be throughout the week. We camp out here at Waters Garden Center. Please visit and say hi. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive, but so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Water's weed and grass stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and grass stopper. It's just $24 and only found at Water's Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Water's Garden Center in Prescott. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to the area. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener.